Clay Patton on the World Radio Network. It's time to take a look at the weekly commodity trade with Daryl uh, with Daryl Holiday of Country Futures in Frankfort, Kansas. And Daryl, it's been kind of a back and forth week, but Friday we get WASD data out. That kind of is lackluster for the trade, and it seems maybe still a little bit more negative connotation. Is there something positive we can glean before the end of the year? Well, yeah, I mean, it really has, was a tr- I think the positiveness was a, is over in the soybean complex, which is, was a strong week. Uh, keep in mind, last week they were, it was down fairly hard, but it turned around and pretty well got most of that gain back. Uh, and although we had so the, we had a lot of wild swings within the soybeans and the soybean complex, in other words, the finished products also, and the wheat, um, but they were in opposite directions. The movement in the soybeans was higher in the soybeans and the soybean meal, to sh- higher to sharply higher, and sharply lower in the soybean oil and sharply lower in the wheat. So we're generally in opposite directions, but at the same time, the corn market ended was almost lifeless for on a week to week basis it, or the week to week change and we were just back and forth really probably pulled in both different directions in a lot of different ways probably the other factor that when you talk about the soybean mill and the soybean complex as a whole you've got to understand really what's going on number 1 argentina is a significant producer of they they crush a lot of their beans and matter of fact 40 to 50% at many times and they export a lot of that meal. So they're, a major, they're an exporter, as opposed to Brazil, tends to export mostly just soybeans. So in the reality, what happens is when you get a little concerned about Argentine dryness, you'll see more strength in the soybean meal. And that was certainly a factor as to why meal went much higher and soybean oil went lower. But that, but that really wasn't even the primary reason. The main driver in that was to have a big drop-off in the crude oil market. As a matter of fact, it was down basically $9 on the week. And lower in the unleaded gas, big drop in the heating oil also, which is tied to soybean oil because of the biodiesel. So what happened, and we've got to remember, we talked a lot about this over the last 60 to 90 days, a tremendous amount of fund money, spec money, whatever money you want to call it, it don't matter, it is that was going into, they were loved being long soybean oil, watch because they were so bullish soybean oil because of biodiesel, and when they do that, they spread it. They buy the soybean oil and they sell the soybean meal. Well, when you see the collapse that we've seen in the soybean oil this week, and really the week before to some extent, that causes a tremendous amount of people that are in those spreads to go, we have got to get out, almost what we call GMO orders, get me out. And so they are selling the soybean oil, but they're buying the meal, and they're buying usually twice as much meal or even three times as much meals are selling soybean oil because that's the ratio of the value in the beans, and that's how it was put on. So that is... Uh, that was probably the biggest driving factor in the bean market as a whole. The bean market always has helped when the meal is strong and the oil is weak because there's way more meal in beans than there is in, than there is oil as a whole. So that was a driving factor along with the dryness in Argentina. Then we got into Friday and we had the WASDE numbers out, the supply demand sheets, and really there was no there were no change really in the wheat and the soybeans. In the world side, they did no basic changes in the world production. They did lower uh, the Argentine wheat production 3 million tons but and they lowered Canada about a million and a half but they raised uh, the 2 million, uh, the Australian crop 2 million tons so on the world basis a little bit of a change not enough to rally the market it really struggled uh, the, on the soybean side there was absolutely no change at all nothing no change in the Argentine or Brazil corn or soybean production which probably was a little surprising to many given the talk about drought in Argentina what USDA is trying to tell you is and they're right the key the key production period for Argentina is down the road. It's late December, January, February. They're a much later planted crop for most of what's going in. They did lower the corn export projection for the uh, on the balance sheet, 75 million bushels. They had to. The pace indicates they probably should have been more aggressive. But in December, that's probably pretty aggressive for them. They did not make any adjustments in any other use numbers. So the estimate, any stocks number goes up to 1.257 billion bushels. So uh, that was really pretty well baked in. I don't. I think most thought that would happen. I think there were some maybe thought they'd jump feed use a little bit, but they didn't, and they just left that alone and just lowered the number. So corn and wheat really struggled because of the slow export business. Soybeans actually strength because of the Argentine dryness. Or the, the, it really affected the meal. Really good demand here. We are seeing some meal weakness as far as basis is considered. And I think it'd be it's unfair to soybeans to not mention also really good export activity in the last couple of weeks. We had a strong export sales week with 1.7 million tons. We had some announced sales this week that should give us a decent number next week. And keep in mind we have to keep that pace up because that we're just keeping the pace needed to hold the projections. And we right now the wheat and 
corn are really suffering because of very slow export pace, and soybeans may find that same fate if you get after the first year and this Brazilian crop starts to uh, become more certain. Right now, the projections are very high, and their conditions are extremely good, not only in Brazil, but in Paraguay, looking at a crop that's twice the size of last year. The concerns, obviously, are still Argentina, but if we see the big increases in Brazil and Paraguay that are right now projected by CODAB and, and really USDA, a four or five million ton drop in Argentina is not going to matter to the market. It's going to be overwhelmed somewhat when we get to next spring. On the week, December corn unchanged at 635. March corn down two at 644. January soybeans up 36 at 1484. The March contract 42 higher on the week at 1488. December Kansas City wheat down 31 at 851. New crop July down 37, closing at 822. January crude oil closed at 7102. 7102 down 896 on the week. Hog futures struggled on the week. They had a weak product. The bellies hit a low uh, at $80 at early or midweek. They, we haven't seen since May of 2020 hitting the $80 mark on the afternoon quote. Therefore, the lower cutout, lower bellies, that the, those formulas, the hog, those cash hog values that are tied to the cutout as a, on a formula basis, they certainly leaked lower. The index leaked lower. Exports remain slower than we really need. We, we really need a, a pickup. Where, of course, China's needs have dropped off dramatically. Mexico's in the front there. We just it's, we still are dealing with about a four to five percent drop off from where I'd like where we'd like to see them. Cattle futures. Uh, we're under pressure early with the idea that we'd have lower cash, but that didn't pan out at all. Cash ended up really you'd have to call steady or even steady to a little bit higher. Early trade uh, on Thursday was at 154 in the south, uh, 156.7 in the north. As we got going, as the south held out, those who held out in the south got some trade on Friday. The majority of the trade on the week in the south was 155, 156. On, and the and same goes if you held out in the north, you got more money too. But the reality is the south held out a little stronger and really got uh, good money and so you'd have to call the money steady to hire that impressed the futures and came back and came way all, well off their lows the beef had a sharp drop early in the week but but it bounced bounced back nicely indicating there's really good demand during that 240 level also these retailers know that the packers uh, slaughter is going to drop off in the next two or three weeks because of the holidays and tighter numbers and so they're they probably were grabbing some beef at those lower levels even for the post-holiday trade on the week, December cattle 153.67 up 32. Uh, the February cattle 155.55 down 32. January feeders up 147, 183.92. March feeders down 17 at 185.10. December hogs 81.57 down 85, and those Feb hogs down 6.42, closing at 84 dollars. And that is Daryl Holiday Country Futures in Frankfort, Kansas. You can always learn more at their website, countryfutures.com. Again, it's countryfutures.com. Do remember, though, trained future options involve risk of loss may not be suitable for all investors. Do consider these risks before investing.